Hi, my name is Carl Kulikowski and I will be demonstrating the installation of Visual Shop Floor 905. I will be using a Windows 10 client for demonstration purposes. The first thing I need to do is verify if my system meets the prerequisites for installing Shop Floor. I will need to have a Visual Enterprise database at 905 or greater, IIS 7 or higher, ASP.NET 4.6 or higher installed for IIS, and the IIS URL rewrite utility must be installed. I know I have a Visual Enterprise 905 database available, so I'll move on and check if IIS is installed. I'll open the IIS Manager application from the Windows Start menu so I can verify the version of IIS I am running. In IIS Manager, I'll open the Help About Internet Information Services dialog. In the dialog, I can see the version of IIS installed. Next, I will verify I have ASP.NET 4.6 or higher installed for IIS. To do that, I will open the control panel from the start menu. In the control panel, I will open Programs and Features. And in Program and Features, I will select the Turn Windows Features on or off. When the dialog opens, I'll expand the nodes and I'll check if ASP.NET is installed. Then I'll move down and check under the Internet Information Services section to verify if ASP.NET is installed for IIS. If these options are not installed, I can simply check them on and click OK to let Windows install them. Last, I need to check if the URL rewrite utility is installed. To check for the URL rewrite utility, I will open IIS Manager, select the root node, and scroll down to the IIS section. If the URL rewrite utility is installed, there will be an icon for it. Now that I have verified the system has the prerequisites, I will move on to the installation. I need to install the VMFG Web API Backend Web Services application, the VMFG Shop Floor Client Web application, and the VMFG Shop Floor help files. Once I have these items installed, I will do a quick test to verify the application is installed and configured properly. First, I will install the VMFG Web API. I will open Windows File Explorer and browse to where the installation files are located. I will open a second Windows File Explorer and browse to the inetpub www root directory where I will be installing the files. Under the www root directory, I will create a folder named VMFG Server. Inside the VMFG Server folder, I will create a folder named VMFG Web API, where I will deploy the VMFG Web API application files. Now I will open the VMFG Web API archive and copy the files from the VMFG Web API folder to the VMFG Web API deployment folder. With the files deployed, I now need to add a configuration file to provide the database connection parameters. I will create this file on my desktop and copy the completed file into the VMFG Web API folder due to security restrictions when saving a file under the IIS directories. Using Notepad, I will add the XML elements to the configuration file. The outermost element should be App Settings.
Inside the app settings element, I will create key elements for each parameter needed. The first parameter is the VMFG instance name, which will match the database name. The logging level to enable logging in the VMFG Web API. This setting is optional and may be set to a value of 0, 1, or 2. 0 would give no logging one would give logging of errors, and two would include additional debugging information. I'll save the file, then move it to the VMFG Web API folder. Next, I need to modify the security settings of the VMFG Web API folder to give the IIS IUSRS read write permissions. This will allow the web services to read and write files under the VMFG Web API subfolders. I also need to configure the VMFG Toolkit connection to the visual database. Under the bin folder, I will locate and run the VMFG config forms executable as administrator. I will enter the database name, which should match the database name I used in the app settings secrets config file. Set the provider and enter the database server name. Enter a user ID and password for testing the database connection. We'll click Next and enter the directory where Visual Manufacturing is installed. The configuration tool creates a file called database.config in the bin directory. Now that I have the files installed and the configuration in place, I need to create the website and application in IIS to serve the application. I will open IIS Manager and select the Application Pools node. I will add a new application pool and I will give it a name of VMFG Web API. The other options are correct, so I will click OK to create the pool. With the VMFG Web API pool created and selected, I will open the Advanced Settings. In the Advanced Settings, I need to check the .NET CLR version is set to version 4 or greater and to change the enabled 32-bit application's value to true. This is required for the Web API to access the VMFG toolkit assemblies. With those changes made, I will click OK to accept. Next, I need to create a site to run the VMFG web application. I will select the Sites node and click Add Website. I will give the site a name of VMFG Server. I will set the application to the VMFG Web API application pool I created. I'll select the VMFG Server folder I created as the physical path. I will provide a port to use for this website. I'm not using SSL for this demonstration, so I'll go ahead and click OK to accept the changes. I will expand the new VMFG server node and select the VMFG Web API folder. Right click and select Convert to Application. Everything appears correct, so I'll click OK to accept. 
you can now see the VMFG Web API node icon has changed. That completes the installation of the VMFG Web API. Next, I need to install the VMFG Shopfloor web application and help files. I will open File Explorer with the folder where I have the deployment files and another File Explorer with the inetpub www root folder. In the www root folder, I will add a folder named VMFG Client. Inside the VMFG Client folder, I will create a folder named VMFG Shop Floor and another folder named VMFG Shop Floor Help Files. I will open the VMFG Shop Floor folder, then open the VMFG Shop Floor archive and copy the VMFG Shop Floor deployment files from the archive to the VMFG Shop Floor folder I created. I will open the VMFG Shop Floor Help folder and copy the files from the VMFG Shop Floor Help archive to the VMFG Shop Floor Help folder I created. Now I will go back to the VMFG Shop Floor folder and browse into the Assets Config folder. I need to configure the Shop Floor Client application to access the Web API and help files. To do that, I will make a copy of the app config sample JSON file on my desktop. I will change the file name to app-config.json. I will open the file with an ASCII text editor such as Notepad. In the file, I will change the API URL to point to the Web API application I created earlier and change the help URL to point to the location of the help files application which I will be completing in just a moment. I will save the file and close it, then move it into the config folder. Now I will open the IIS manager to create the client application site. I will select the application pools node and add a new application pool. I will name the pool VMFG Shop Floor. I will leave the other defaults and click OK to create the pool. Next I will create the site by selecting the sites node and clicking Add Website. I will enter the site name of VMFG Client. Select the application pool I just created, VMFG Shop Floor. Browse and select the root folder for the site where I installed the application folders. In this case, that is the VMFG Client folder. I will enter a port number for the site of 9830. I will click OK to create the site. I will expand the new VMFG Client Site node, then right click on the VMFG Shop Floor folder and select Convert to Application. Click OK to convert it. I will follow the same steps to convert the VMFG Shop Floor help files to an application. I'm done with IIS Manager, so I'll go ahead and close it. That completes the installation of the shop floor application and I can move on to testing the application. I'll open a browser and enter the URL of the VMFG shop floor application. The application login page should display. I'll enter login credentials and click sign in. As you can see, I was successfully signed into the application. I can now open various pages within the application. I can open the Preferences page to set preferences.
and I can open the help to test the help installation. I can click on About to view the system and application version information. Everything appears to be working, so I'll play around a bit to try it out. I've finished trying out the application, so I'll click on Sign Out to take me back to the login screen. That concludes my demonstration of installing ShopFloor. I hope you enjoyed the video.